All right, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to resize a text box and how to get around a program that's crashing. So we're going to first we'll look at the code, I suppose. All we're saying is text2.text .text equals text1.text. .text. So this is text1.text. .text, this is text2.text. .text. So when I click this button, command3.click, it will make this copied into this. So let's do that. This says success. I press it. This says success. I push it a bunch of times. Nothing different seems to happen. I type something here. Press it. There we go. And let's try work. Press it. OK. And you can see these work. OK. All right. So let's say you wanted to type in, this is a cool program. Uh-oh. I can't see what I typed. I can click it and see it up here, but I can't see it all here. So how can I make that bigger? Don't worry, it's easy. You just click on the box, grab it, slide it over. We'll take this little label here I have, slide that over. All right, try it again. Now we'll type, this is a cool program. There we go. So that's how you can do it. You can also have it stretch and uh, depending on the size of this. Uh, I can make a video on that if you want. But I wanted to go on to something a little more complex. Now let's say that the text box is going to equal the value of 0 divided by 4 times 0 divided by 0. I always type cal. Okay, so now it's going to be trying to divide by zero and it's going to get a stack overflow. So let's try it. Overflow. Program is crashed. Can't do anything. If I go to debug, I can see this is the line that caused it to crash. But the program is now unresponsive. And if I wasn't running this in a development, then the program would close. So maybe it was something I had typed here, so let's type something else. Nope. The reason why is because all it's doing is this. It has nothing to do with what's here. But how could we fix this? Well, here's an easy way. We're going to say, let's say, fail123. OK, that's at the end of the code. That's after this. And before it, we'll say on error, go to yeah, fail123. So now what this is going to do is it's going to look at this and it's going to say, if there's an error, I want to go to here. And when you get to here, all it's saying is it's done. Close, close the function, it's over with. Okay. So what's going to happen is it's going to try and do this code and it's going to fail. So when it fails, it's going to say, what do I do if I get an error? I go to here. So it goes to here. The program is done. So let's test it out now. Press the button. Nothing changed here. Nothing changed here. Let's make these say one, two, three. Doesn't seem to be doing anything, right? Program is still responsive. But it didn't crash. OK. Now what we could do is we could say, if it fails, we want text2.text .text to say it failed. OK. So now let's go here. We'll click it. It failed. See? So that's this simple statement here on error go to and then making something with a colon here. That's all you have to do. If you want to be a little more specific and helpful to the person running the program, you could say MSG box uh, error, or let's say error number. And um, that 
Now, when I click it, oops, I messed up. Forgot to put that back in. Put it on the wrong side. There we go. Okay, let me show you what that code is. So this is text. That's just something for me to read. This is actual code. This again is just something for me to read. And this is code again. So there's only two pieces of code and in between it is words. So I click it, error number six, error is overflow. Now, even though it did that, the program still works. So this is a great way to debug, a, keep a program from crashing without having to fix anything. People, a lot of times, would rather have a program just say error than to actually have to close the program, especially if it takes a long time to load, especially if you're working on something where you have to save your work. And if it crashes, then you lose your work because you didn't save it right before it crashed. So, and this is Visual Basic 4. They stopped developing it in 1995. I made this video in 2015, so this is 20 year old technology. So if they can do this 20 years ago, from the time I made this video, then doing it today should be very simple. Granted, this is a very high level uh, programming language, which means that you don't have access to a lot of things because they simplified a lot of things and took out a lot of abilities. So if I just want to resize a text box or something like that, it makes this really easy because I don't actually have to type in the code for it. Like if I want to put a line, I can do lines and you know, do stuff like that, so. But it comes at the expense that you can't do that much. But even if the programming language is really complicated, complicated, then still doing something on the basis of this is just as simple. All right, so that's all for the video.